Hello, and welcome to my next executive series video. Our topic is design inputs. Aaron Snyder here from Quality Systems Explained, where we make quality systems simple for you. If you're new to my channel, please hit the subscribe button. If this is the first executive series video that you've seen, please go back and watch the introduction. You can check out the video description below for links to any supporting information and a summary of the material that we will cover today. In the executive series, we have a standard agenda that contains four topics. You can see those in the progress bar below. Make sure you stick around to the end for our three bonus questions. Our requirement today, design input, comes directly from 82030.c and ISO 1345 section 7.3.3. Design input in five words. Document user needs and requirements. We have to have a procedure that defines how we capture the design input requirements. We have to capture those device requirements and ensure that they are appropriate to address the intended use for both the user and the patient. We have to ensure that the design inputs are clear, consistent, they do not conflict, and that they are testable. And finally, we have to ensure that all design inputs are documented, reviewed, and approved as we move through the design and development process. ISO 1345 clearly calls out five different design input areas that we must consider. They are functional requirements, performance requirements, safety requirements, regulatory requirements, usability, and the outputs of risk management. How do I know this is working? Well, first, our procedure has a template in it that defines all of the various areas where we have to collect our design inputs. Second, the design inputs, they're collected by a cross-functional team that represents all of the different areas that are part of the design and development process. And then finally, we capture those design inputs. They are clear, they are consistent, they are testable, and we review them during design reviews. How do I know this is not working? Well, first, we have verification and validation failures that are clearly tied back to missing design inputs. Second, design inputs are found late in the design process and require major changes and rework to get your product back up to speed. And then finally, design inputs are ambiguous, they're not testable, they conflict, or they're just not clear. Now for the three bonus questions. First, who reviews and approves the design input document? Second, how do we capture and document the intended use and the indications for use for our medical device? And then finally, what mechanism do we use to ensure that our design inputs are clear, consistent, they do not conflict, and they are testable? Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please like, subscribe, share, and comment. If you have any questions, please send me an email at qms.jedi at gmail.com. This is Aaron Snyder from Quality Systems Explained. Never stop learning.